Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hit or Die podcast with your hosts Jake Saldati and Chad Rawford. A uh, big one today. I mean, all our guests are big. I say that every time, but Legend. nothing L- except all Larry. we get is the best. Um, Jordan Ribera. It's a, a long time coming though, too. Yeah, like, we've been talking about this since we did the uh, College World Series uh, uh, group. Um, it's like right when COVID started, I think. Yeah, because mm-hmm. we did everybody on Zoom, uh, which was a great episode as well. Um, but Jordan, a homegrown talent, went to Clovis West, Fresno State, played professionally with the Rockies. Um, and now if you're looking to finance your home, mm-hmm. this is the guy to go to. That's Where right. do they go? We're all game. They come to me. 559-824-3701. <laughs> ring. I'll get you the best pricing, best rate possible. Um, and then I'll, I'll market your house and hashtag it with ball game, which is my slogan now. And uh, probably, you know, some hitting tips. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It'll knock it out of the park. That's it's a right. one-stop shop. One-stop <laughs> shop. You got a kid looking for <laughs> for some swing adjustments. You know, it's a one-stop shop. Hey, if you're listening, uh, go follow the podcast on Twitter at Hit or Die Podcast, on Instagram at Hit or Die. And if you're watching, please subscribe to the channel. I'm terrible. We are terrible. Notoriously bad at promoting the YouTube channel. Uh, I think we're still stuck in between 500 somewhere. And we, yeah, there's it's no, all right. no reason not to get to a thousand. I don't know why we, I just don't do a good job promoting it. It's but too late for me to get the tattoo now. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but go subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel. Uh, we got to go back to like high school. Okay. Cause and you don't know this, but in 07, your senior year at Clovis West, uh, you guys kind of, I think you had to run on the road, right? And you knocked Madera off in the semis and you, you hit a home run that me and some of my friends, Still kind of remember, because uh, you weren't supposed to win that game. No, no. We, uh, <laughs> well, kind of going that far back. <clears throat> and, um, and Merton's listening. I guarantee you Merton's going to listen to this, and he was there. So a lot of those guys were. And Hinkle. Uh, yeah, and Hinkle, too. Well, I, fortunately, Merton was drafted by the Rockies, so him and I hashed this out already. Okay, I didn't so, know this. I love it. He didn't bring so, it up. So we're, we're, we're good on this now. Um, Hinkle, not so much. I mean, I love the guy, and what a stud player, by the yeah, way. He yeah. was, I mean... Um, but my senior year was, was unique. And I, and I say that because, um, after my junior year, I had committed to play football at Fresno state. I wasn't going to play baseball at all. Um, was going to go do spring ball with football and, uh, coach Thiessen, great, great mentor, great coach. Um, you know, different style than a lot, but a guy that loved the game, guy that loved to do things the right way. Um, pulled me aside and said, dude, look, we, you know, you, your senior year is, is, is supposed to be your fun year. Um, we'd love to have you out there. If you want DH, you can come DH. If you want to play first, you can come play first. If you want to come play third. And I was like, ah, man, like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I want to go get ready. Cause I want to start as a freshman playing football. And, um, fortunately I had my dad in my corner and my dad's like, look, dude, you get to do this one time, you know, like your senior year is supposed to be your fun year. Um, you've made a commitment to these guys the last three years, like f- finish the journey, you know, finish the journey. You're not going to lose any step because you go play baseball. And I did. Um, and, you know, fortunately it was, uh, or I guess the, the right decision, you know, I ended up hitting 13 home runs that year and, Tim uh, beat Tim O'Brien's record and Tim and I share a birthday. So every December 22nd, he messaged me on my page and says, he's, you know, you know, I'm still mad at you, but happy birthday. You know, it's just funny how the, how the stars align that we share the birthday. You happy birthday. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, but yeah, you know, we, 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 we ended up beating Madera and then we go to Centennial Bakersfield and face a dude named Jared Martin, who some six, seven donkey thrown 96, wasn't that like a football score type game though? No, it was like was it tight. I thought it was like it, it, twenty. It was run. tight. I mean, I, I, he, you hit one out of that game too, right? No, you didn't. No, trust me. No, I got, <laughs> I got the steroid chant that game. I got, <laughs> I got jammed my first at bat so bad that I still see a therapist for my thumb, but I got a base hit out of it, like slid into first just because I was, you know. Um, but then the 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 best part is like there was a play at third base. Um, where I put a tag down and the guy that I tagged didn't like how hard I put the tag down and then words were exchanged and, you know, he kind of chest up and, um, 
I think he realized that I was bigger than him. <laughs> So he goes back to the de- long. Long story short, it's Dusty Robinson. I was gonna say, is it Dusty? <laughs> so my best friend, like yeah. one of my best friends to this day, roommates, you know, like, but like that's how great my senior year was. Like Dusty and I would still talk about it, and you know, we go to Fresno State. And, uh, he could he could hit a little bit too, man. That guy, oh, that so, guy, had some pop. Yeah, just yeah. <laughs> so wait a second, you go to Centennial. How tempting when you walk in and you see that ballpark? It's like, oh, I thought I was gonna hit seven jacks that game. <laughs> I think BP Thiessen was like, look, you're good. You're done because we are we have like seven balls left. I mean, it was just one of those Cracker Jack boxes, you know, but that wasn't how the game played out. And I, I'll never forget. Jared Martin, you know, I would say he's probably the best pitcher, pit, uh, pitcher I ever faced in, in high school baseball. Like, could be because I was left on left, but this dude was filth, just filthy, like, Two seam run as a left hand hitter, you're just irritated because it starts at the outside corner and then you're just getting jammed. And then a couple other guys were getting hits that maybe had four hits all year, and I was like, "Come on!" <laughs> but we ended up losing. Um, but you know, it wrapped up a very good decision to play baseball my senior year and you know finish the race. So I was happy with it and. Um, then it obviously led to the next chapter, which was, you know, I had a meeting with Coach Caviglia and, and Scott, and they were like, hey, come do both. And I was like, man, that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> and then I go, <laughs> Marsubian has me meet with Batesel, and um, Batesel's like, you got a good swing, but you'll never play defense on my field, <laughs> ever. Basically, like, you're trash. <laughs> And I was like, hmm, interesting. You know, fast forward my junior year, I won a gold glove at first base. So, or yeah, my junior year, won a gold glove at first base. And still to this day, Bates and I text probably once a week and I'll send him a picture of that gold glove and like people don't forget. <laughs> we should have brought it and just put it right here. Yeah, Ware tweeted something the other day about kids not doing defense and only hitting and I had my brother who was over at my parents' house take a picture of that gold glove and send it to me. And I tweeted out where I said, just do both. It's not at your house? <laughs> no, it's in my parents' closet or something. They're, they're trying to get me to get all my stuff out of the house, but um, my wife doesn't want all that stuff at our house. So, And all my office is like my grandpa Jim from the red. So, I don't, you know, uh, all his, him and Stan Musial's last game and him and Pete Rose. So I'm like, where do you put a gold glove in college next to all that stuff? And where your computer goes. Exactly. Yeah. Or on the floor somewhere. Or just give it to Coach Batesel. <laughs> I've thought about that. <laughs> thought about that. Yeah, and he would get a kick out of it, but then it, he would probably just throw it away. So what, so you have a meeting with Bates and like, what comes to the decision to now not play football? And now you're well. Hold on, I want to go back to football. Go ahead, because I was at the De La Salle game. Mm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I want to. You mentioned that's this. a historic. It game is right historic. There. It was national news. Yes. Now, what was that? Your sophomore or junior year. So my junior year, we go to De La Salle yeah. and give them their first loss at home. The week before, they lost to the Seattle Bellevue team. in Seattle. In Seattle, which was like the first loss since '88 or whatever. The following week, we go there and beat them in their own house. And it was like, I was there, dude, with the Perry's. It was. Did you get a concussion that game? Probably. Because <laughs> I, I want to say you well, played no, the first half and then and the second half, I think. <laughs> I'm not there, sure. There was no protocol back then. <laughs> you know, which, 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 which time? Yeah. <laughs> which time in that game? Yeah. there's Because that's what I was thinking of maybe what led you to baseball. Was maybe the concussions? No, so because I knew you were that type of player in the, that middle line. Kamikaze, yeah. just but it wasn't the concussion. It was actually as weird as this sounds. Uh, you guys probably remember my city county all star game is the year of that fight, huge fight. Trent Soares at quarterback, Aaron Banks, and we fought. They were like after the play. Um, I think it was Aaron Banks slammed Trent Soares, and there was pushing and shoving and. All of a sudden, full out brawl, like full out brawl. You can YouTube it today; it's still there. But during that game, I, on a, of course, a special teams play of all plays, we punted, 
and I got blindsided and broke my thumb. And I was so frustrated. I was like, I'm never playing. I'm, I'm done with football. Like, I'm done. The next day, called Batesel. was like, I'm coming to play. Like, that. it was probably out of rage and and irritation. and But I was so frustrated that I was like, I want to go play baseball. Probably because I see how soft all the baseball guys are. And it's not as much, you know, <laughs> physical beating on my body anymore. And so that was it. That was the turning point where I was like, had you wanted to play football, do you think the opportunity to do bolted city would have, was that even, you know what you considered or was the scholar to to play at state? Like it was either football or baseball. I mean, or do both. both Yeah. So I I really did think about doing both at, at Juco and you know, I watched Nick Bates do both. Yeah. Stud state and, and was able to do it. Like, you know, and then you finish in football, but like, I thought, okay, if he can do it at a D1 level, like I can maybe figure it out at the JUCO level. And, um, I, it was there. I was definitely considering like, this might be the best option for me until you broke your thumb. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, football's done, done with football, never playing again. So we always talk about, we've asked numerous guys, especially guys that go to Fresno State and, uh, you know, under Coach Batesel, talk about the difference from, you know, your high school. And Labby's been on here a bunch and said, you know, like, you get some guys, they're not ready for that that next step. You think you are. What is it? The honeymoon's over is, is what he'll, he'll say on here. When you step on campus and your initial, like, oh, this is, this is no longer high school. So without football, I, I'm, I, and I say this 100% sincere, without football, I don't know if I'd have made it under Bates. That's the type of coach he is. Like, you got to be mentally, physically just strong. And when I say mentally, like, you get broken in football mentally. Like, physically, yes, but like, you have someone like I was fortunate to play for a guy named Jim Hardigan who really shaped my mental toughness, you know, and taking you beyond the breaking point of where you think you can be to, you know, where you really can be um, from a mental toughness standpoint. And if I didn't have that going in day one debates, I'd be like, Coach Scott, you know, Kaviglia, you guys still <laughs> this is still <laughs> available? Off there. Yeah. Um, but Batesel, you know, as soon as you prove that you are mentally tough and committed and selfless, like you become one of his children. Like Batesel to this day is one of my like closest human beings on this planet. You know, we text once a week, um, check how, in. How much of that is about baseball? Um, or just, I would say, how much is it just friendship? Yeah, I would say 70% is usually just something that came up about baseball or, but a lot of times, you know, he asks about the kids. How's, how's Cristiano, you know, bring the kids by the dugout, you know, I think he's also in a different season of life right now. Sure. Um, which, you know, I, I feel like the dogs this year are not as um, in tune to what, a lot of us had to go through with Bates on his prime. Um, I feel he's just in a different season of life where uh, me personally, I don't feel like he's getting the recognition, recognition, recognition. What was that? Recognition. Yeah. Same thing. Um, that he should be getting. Um, well, a lot of people like to like hate on it a little bit. Mm-hmm. I, I see tweets all the time. I'm like, you do realize like, and it's not no disrespect. I'm a dog fan. Like always have been. It's hard to win. We talk about it. Mm-hmm. It's hard to win. What do you, you know, one championship. Yeah, okay. One, one super. Okay. You know, no disrespect to coach Bennett, but they only went what two times. Yeah. And it's not, it's not easy to do. And, and I think, I think for the first time, I would say over the last few years, we're trying to bridge that gap of, um, the comparison between Bennett and Batesel and, really just unite as yeah. alumni. Sure. Like we all went through the same program. We all tried to compete. We all tried to win some of us, you know, but they're, they're 
for the longest time, there was that gap of Bennett guys, the Bennett guys, Batesel guys. Versus the guys. Yeah. And I think we've seen a good, you know, Terrence and myself have, have tried to bridge that as much as possible, but like, we're all, we all bleed the same color, man. Like, you know, well, you respect also who did it before you right, guys. Right, 100%. And we just had this conversation about that. And, you know, even with, with Bumate and Clovis Ice, like, it's an important thing to know. Who came before who you. Who came before you. 100%. Because they're cheering you on, you know what I mean? And you may never met them in your life. Dude, I remember at Clovis West watching guys like Finnegan take ground balls at shortstop. Like, well, you would have been a freshman when they won it in 04. Right. And I'm like, dude. And like, Cola and like that's a that's picking those dudes' brains. Like these are the dudes that Cola, J Mo. Yeah, J Mo, yeah. Like all these dudes that come before you, Jeff Shop. Yeah, you know, obviously being the quarterback he was, but he played baseball too like you appreciate, you know, and I I think there was a you know, somebody there I don't know who did it or how it became, but there was a wedge there that like you know the Batesville guys didn't appreciate the, the you know the, the the other guys and or vice versa and it was like that's not the case at all. Like I love hearing those stories. Yeah. You know the Bennett stories when you all played on the same field, right? You know, you know, and I know a lot of those guys that were the first ones in the in line for the parade when we won. Yeah, you know, but it was just there was a weird gap there that for way too many years wedged us apart and. You know, it took a guy like Frazier to be like, nah, we're all in this. You know, we, we're all alumni. We're all dogs. And, and now I think we're starting to see that more and more. That's good. It's easier to, you, know, you all should enjoy it together. Absolutely. 100%. Um, you know, so your freshman year, obviously, is 08, so the, the national championship year. Bates says you'll never play <laughs> defense. Uh, and you DH'd quite a bit that year. So did what were the expectations going into like that team? It, it just to do what they did is still it's still insane to me to even think about a process like what you guys not just to get do it all but like to even we always start with just to even make it to the postseason wasn't you had to win a tournament and like <clears throat> did you ever have like a set role was that ever discussed like here's what we think about here's how you're gonna play a role is as a freshman so I walked on. When I met with Bates after the the All Star, I walked on. And I had to earn a scholarship. I had the best fall of my life. I mean, I think I took Tanner Shepherd's yard like three times, and nobody took Shepherd's yard. And him and I are still buddies to this day. But like, I had to have hit four twenty in the fall. Like, didn't matter who they threw out. Clayton Allison, J Dub, I was hitting. Like, and that's all Bates will cared about. It was like, if you hit, you'll play. Bates will hates pitchers. Like, you hit, you play. <laughs> And, and that's it. So earned a scholarship at the end of fall. Bates will call me and he's like, hey, I'm putting you on scholarship. You know, with Fresno State, there's like six full scholarships. So I think I got like, you know, just my tuition paid for, which was great. Um, and then opening opening day comes, I'm in the lineup. I think I'm hitting seventh or something like that. And I think I go 0 for 12, my first 12 at-bats with like 9Ks. No joke. I can't make this up. And Batesel was just like laughing. Like, you're going to get it. And I'm like, I don't know if I am. I remember opening night was against a dude named Gamboa, stud. Um, but just, I, I, I couldn't hit. I, I just couldn't figure it out. Um, and then I, you know, ended up falling out of that. In fact, we had another guy that wasn't hitting, another freshman that got to a point where J-Dub was DHing. <laughs> like, J-Dub, go hit. Because my guys that are supposed to DH can't hit. But fast forward, um, I started hitting, and we're barely 500, and we make a regional against uh, in Long Beach, against yeah, Long, Long Beach, Beach, Cal, and USD. That Brian Mattis dude. Um, Espinosa's playing short for Long Beach. Cal had that first baseman, Cooper, um, just studs, Tyson Ross, like, and here we are in our cotton gray t-shirts. Here's the four Warming seat. up. Here's the four seat. There was no dry fits back then for us peasants. Like we had cotton, um, 
somehow we managed to get through that. I mean, Mendonca, Mendonca got hot. Um, our pitching staff was great. So we somehow get through that regional. And from that, I want to say from either the WAC tournament or the regional, we played in every elimination, elimination yes. game possible. Yes, you did. Which is like unheard of. Um, Never been done. It's borderline impossible. It is. Correct. We were, Honestly, you're, that, you're that one team that, yeah. and when they say one in a hundred, you're the one. Yeah. We were barely above 500. Like, well, you guys had to win the WAC tournament to make yeah. the regional. I don't even, in fact, I don't even know how we won the WAC. I, you guys, I think, even had to win like the end of the regular season to get into, into the, the tournament. tournament. Like it was an all uphill battle all the way through. It was, um, we had no business being there. Let's just say that. Like, Bags were packed, guys getting ready to go play summer ball, guys getting ready to just check out. And then we win that regional. And then we go to ASU. ASU. Number one team. Number one team in the country. Brett Wallace, Ike Davis. Uh, no shot. Cole Calhoun. Leak. Think, was Leak there? Leak on the bump. Yeah, um, a filthy ball club, dude. I think Kipnis was Kipnis, playing yeah. second. Yep. Um, just, I don't know, what is that like? Six guys that are Big projected. First, they're first rounders. Right. <clears throat> and um, funny story. Uh, I go to pinch hit in one of the games against Mike Leak. And I draw a walk. And that was my first walk the entire season. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, to this day, you know, I joke about it. But, like, it's funny because that walk led to... Wetzel's hit to Hedstrom's Grand Slam. Grand Slam, and that's... So, like, my walk set it up. So First every, one all okay, year. So, you you didn't talk about this when we had all of you on there, and everybody mentioned, you know, Gavin's Grand Slam kind of been like... We're, we're, that, they, they all said that that's the moment we realized, nah, we're going to win this thing. Yeah, but if you... It, it, at that time, if you would have... get If if you would ask the guys, like, in the dugout, Robert walking, they would have been like, <laughs> we're going to win. <laughs> like... The baseball gods are on our side today. If Rivera walked, they might as well just give us the game. Well, now. think about it. If you don't get on base, right? It's a three and immediate, shot. immediate pinch pinch run. I don't even know if I touched first base, but I like <laughs> wait a second. I was like, base you didn't even the get runner to was run. standing right behind him. Yeah. Do I walk back to the dugout or do I? How's this work? Because I've never walked before. You know, I wasn't a threat. Did on you the look base, back at the umpire? Was it really a ball? This wait, four uh, balls is a thing. No, honestly. <laughs> Probably could have gone either way. I could see the pitch in my head. Outside corner, 3-2 count. You know, I missed two good fastballs to hit. But I was like, I cannot believe he didn't ring up this freshman when he's got Mike. He knew who Mike Leak was. And here I am, some donkey with his thumb up like this from the surgery. <laughs> ball four. And I was like, that's right. Ball four. Where do I go? <laughs> like, how does this work? <laughs> you, yeah. uh, and then, I mean, he, <laughs> Gavin hits the bomb. Uh they have the fake fight. Yeah, that um, was that was that was interesting and I, I I use that word lightly because like it didn't affect us. And I say that because like was that the purpose of it, you think? Well, you just didn't care. Well, we didn't care and and like that wasn't anything that would startle. I mean, Sustorf and Wilson fought in an inter squad game on on a Sunday at 1 p.m. when it was 103 out, like, that's normal. As Coach Basil says, you don't get along, get it on. And um, so, I, I mean, it was just confusing. And and we didn't really know what was going on. And then you're like, why are these two fighting? Like, both can't get hurt because they're projected to go top, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, the coach wouldn't have allowed it. Like, right. It was Murphy at the time, right? <laughs> yeah, it was Murphy. I think it was Murph, right? I think you, it was. Yes, it, it was because I remember the next year Murph got the job, or excuse me, when I got drafted, Murph got the job in I know he went Oregon. To yeah. Um, With the Emeralds? Yeah, the Padres. Emeralds. Yes, Padres, yes, uh, yes, low the Padres. Or, uh, short season. So I played against him, and I remember Murph coming up to me before the game one time and just shaking his head like, I remember you. And I was like, okay, that Murph, Murph, Murphy saying this means I'm going to get one in the back of the neck because this dude just <laughs> likes to fight and yeah. likes to stir it up. Yes. Um, but but then I got to talk to him. He's just great dude and great coach. I mean, he, um, you know, probably a lot of the guys have the same thoughts on Batesel because they don't know him, but Murph was that type. Like, 
you hated playing against him because he just would go to battle for his players. Like, regardless of the situation, he would be the first one out to slug whoever was in the wrong on the other team, even if it was his own player's fault. Like, Batesville was that way. Yeah. Batesville always had your back. Like, if the media tried to blast you, Batesville would shut it down and and step in and just – the guy you want to suit up for and go to go to battle for, and that's probably why him and I are so close. It's it's, you know, a, as soon as you got to that level with him, like you were family, and that goes a long way during, you know, your your collegiate career, which is a lot of lot of hours, a lot of um, extra swings, and and you know, guys that aren't able to get to that point miss out on you know, what can be and what Batesville and I have and I'm sure what a lot of the other players have with Batesville, but Murph was Murph was a a gamer, man. He that dude when it when the lights went on, like you were in war. Um it was fun to play against, but it was fun at that point in my career to know like, okay, this is Batesville in college. Like, you know, he'll talk to you before the game, but if the situation comes up and he's got to hit you in the back of the head, like he's going to do it, <laughs> you know? Uh, I mean, everybody knows we sus catches the final out. Um, no, it was uh, not sus. Door. I think so. Oh, in the, in the supers. In, yeah, yeah. In supers. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so we, yeah, and dogs are heading to Omaha. Like it was there ever, did you guys ever come down or did you, was it even kill? Like I, I still don't. Well, from all the stories, it seems like you didn't have time. You guys didn't have time for like to, to sit Enjoy back and relax day. or. Yeah. I feel like we got on a plane back to Fresno and like within 48 hours, we were on another plane b- over to Omaha. Like it, there was no, and that could have been because we played all of the elimination games possible. So it added the days. Yeah, right. you, got, um, you played through Monday, it had to be right. back on Wednesday to the world series. But it was like, you got home and it was like, you didn't have time to unpack. You kept everything or, you know, your bags are packed. And then we fly to Omaha and <laughs> they get us this charter jet. Right. And we're up there and we're probably an hour and a half from Omaha. And then the captain gets on, he's like, Hey, we might experience some turbulence. Um, there's a pretty bad storm that I think we'll be able to just beat. And at that time, we all had our headphones in. Nobody's paying attention. What he failed to mention was like it was a level whatever don't fly tornado. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't beat it. So, like, all of a sudden, the turbulence, like, we had to, it, what felt like we were all going to die. We dropped however many feet and made an emergency landing at some strip in a cornfield, you know, but what the, the funny thing is like Gavin Hedstrom and I were listening to back then it was either Tiesto or Benny Benassi. So trying to have fun with it. Then you got Grubb in the back who still to this day, I don't think he's flown anywhere since like scarred for life. He wants, you know, he doesn't like to say it publicly, but he said, I'll never fly again. At, well, he flew home, but I think his, you know, yeah, I don't think he's taken a plane anywhere since, which we all make fun I mean, of. That would, that, would, that would do it for me too, probably. I don't know. It, but just, so we get to Omaha and then like, you know, you have the ceremony. I don't even know what we had. I feel like we practiced through the ceremonies. Like we, it was we weren't changing anything we were doing. So we were running wall and backs at practice while all the other teams are doing interviews with Aaron Andrews and stuff. And there we are in the corner running like, why? <laughs> like wh- everybody got like new Oakley's and then I think Garza tried to hook up the Oakley guy with us and somebody, I'm not going to mention any names, like it's a compliance issue. No Oakley's for you guys. I'm like, okay. Yeah. All right, this is Fresno State. That's what we're doing. Um, so we didn't get any of the perks, but, you know, game one, we go out there against Rice on Father's Day. They have this dude, Adam Barry or something Barry, um, another stud pitcher that we just tattooed. Hit a home run on Father's Day. My dad flew out there for Father's Day, hit a home run, and we just 
wax rice who was supposed to beat us by like whatever eight or nine runs um then i think we were practicing the next day running again it was just kind of like that format all the way through oh, even yeah. through like the three game series yeah or, stuff you still talk to your therapist about today but was yeah. there a i mean you hit one against georgia too in the final yeah. three so i guess going into the winner take all game three what was the the vibe first and then like was was Bates was there any speech was there anything specific what I think was the I think the only thing Bates said is why is why is the guy interviewing our side and Aaron Andrews interviewing on the other side with Gordon Beckham and Josh Fields and all these guys like that was might have been the only thing he said the vibe was just like we're gonna win I mean we're obviously we've proven that we can win just keep doing your thing and by keep doing your thing I mean I think Burke was down in the lobby drinking margaritas before the game, our closer, and I, do your thing. You know, it was just one of those, like, why change something that's that's working? And, um, you know, when, when Bates gives you the freedom to play, you know, that A means he trusts you, and B, like, as a player, when you have the freedom to go about your business and, and not be micromanaged, you know, it makes a huge difference. You know, you, there's no pressure of, you know, having to perform a certain way because you're given that trust from your, from your skipper, like go out and do your thing, you know? And it's, I mean, Chad, you know, it's, it's a game changer. Yeah. When you don't have to worry about striking out and, you know, having a consequence, yeah, it's it, it's well, definitely it just, it just seemed like somebody picked up somebody like it was a new I think Muno had a rough start to that game, right? Wasn't there a couple errors? I think he made but three al- errors. Also made like a double play mm-hmm. that was just it saved the day too. Right. Right. You know? And I remember J Dub turned to him and be like, I'm gonna get you another one. I think after the third one, J Dub was like <laughs> This is it, bro. <laughs> I've given you th- this, I've given you three. Okay. <laughs> I'm on like one day rest of 120 pitches. I need you to just put it in your glove and then throw it to first base. But no, I mean, that was the vibe. Like normally everyone freaks out or, oh my gosh, but having And he was a freshman, right? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. He's tired of four out innings. Yeah. But I'm telling you, getting, getting Justin Wilson to that final game was almost that moment, I guess you can say, that you're like, okay, we got our horse. We got the momentum. Shit, yeah. Put put us against anybody right game now. Game two is like, you go look at the scorecard at game two. And you win that. You guys find a way to win that game. I think we threw the house. You're we not. Threw like, there's, there's no losing game three. And I think Georgia was like, what just. What, we're, 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 we were supposed I to I honestly feel thing. like Georgia were the ones. And I don't think a guy like Gordon Beckham would ever say this. But no. like, we're in trouble. Like. I can't imagine them sleeping well that night. Yeah. Knowing that they absolutely that we ran the, you know, a, a staff day, call it, just mowed them down with guys that had maybe pitched one inning the entire World Series or prior to that coming in going one, two, three with three punches. Like, you can't make this up. What was that final? Like, I, you, I'm sure you remember the final out. Like, what was that just? Go back. I mean, I, did you ever go back off into this? How yeah. often do you go back to it? Um, like to be able that dog pile is famous. At least once a year. Yeah, I mean, with the, when it comes around, Tomlinson getting the the kick to the face and having a black eye with that mullet that he had, like, you know, you 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 do something and it's like it's over like that, you know, you like you're there in the moment, and it's it's one of those where that you're having this out of body experience, like okay, we did it. Like, as a player, you're like, what's next? What's next? What's next? But then it's like, this is it. Like, you did it. You accomplished what every college baseball player sets out to do, and you did it with a trash record and everybody rooting against you until you get to Omaha and you're the underdog and everybody's pulling for you. But it was, um, you know, I'll never forget it, being on that dog pile with those guys. I mean, they're all that's a that's a brotherhood that you know that'll last forever freaking special man it's it's one of those things too where people around here remember that day what they were doing where they were at um 
people causing car accidents outside doghouse and you know then we come back and we have that parade at fresno state and you know i i it's wild wild and you're a freshman right yeah like the best is yet to come at least you you're think, just like right? oh we're gonna go do this three yes. more times yeah yeah and then i think we just got waxed the next year like first two series i think we lost both series like oh it was bad well you get you get to your junior year and this is you know I, I still don't i can't make sense of it but do you literally have about as good a season as any player can have uh was 343 you led the nation in home runs, uh, first team all whack, whack player of the year, all American, uh, sixty nine ribs, and you go undrafted. And like I don't, for most most people, like bitter is probably not even a good enough word. Like anger, like there's a lot of things that come to mind. Yeah, it was um, my junior year was probably the most humbling experience that that I've had um, as a man with life you know you're you're at the top you know from a from a stat standpoint you got all these projections of where you're going and you know leading up to that year I put a lot of work in the off season with Bates like something clicked whether it was playing every day or or you know finally learning to take the back you know the backside through left center and start hitting them out to left center, whatever it was, um, you know, you feel good. I literally felt like every at bat, I, I was going to hit a home run, like good chance. I'm going to go yard. I mean, you take Nebraska's closer yard opening day for a walk off. Like but you had a, a run there. I think it was, it was a whack player of the week, but it was, yeah, it was, National, like, it was like four five, four home runs and five. your last five or five home runs and your last six at bats and I was like, okay, I you know, fast forward. A, I was pissed off we didn't even make a regional because like I felt our team was better than Hawaii, who we lost to, um, and then selfishly like you're on the map, but now you want to go play the dudes and now you want to be on national TV and, and do perform it and, and show your. Showcase yourself. Um, and then, you know, so then it's the draft stuff. And um, the guy I had represented me said, hey, you know, I've been uh, Dodgers are, are who really want you probably second or third round. Um, long story short, the, the Dodgers did call. But I was the guy I had represented me tagged me with a number that was not realistic that I did not know about. Um, so I got what they called red flagged, like he's not signing for anything under this. And I didn't know about it, which to this day still irritates me, but I'm, you know, everything happens for a reason. Um, so I don't get called. And then I just start seeing everybody getting drafted in front of me that I'm like, I'm better than that dude. Guys on my own team. I'm like, no shot. Like, come on, you know? Um, so then I get, um, I go undrafted and I was like, done, done went into this dark just state of call it depression you know i don't even think i know what depression really means but i don't want to talk to anybody i don't want to talk to family i don't want to answer the news um and then the one phone call i picked up was bates and he said hey so what's up bates he said some along lines of like heard you didn't get dra drafted or just some <laughs> something you know <laughs> Something only Bates can say that I'm like, allow it. I'll allow it. You get um, a pass today. So then he says, uh, they got your plane ticket. You're flying out to the Cape Cod in two days. And I was like, like I, I didn't even want to play baseball that summer. Um, but I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. I need to clear my head. I need to get out of town, go to the Cape Cod, play for YD. Um, and one of, was one of the best summers of my life. Um, was roommates with Joe Panic. Him and I became super close. Um, led that league in RBIs and home runs against some, you know, top notch pitching. Got Desclafani was in there. You know, just studs. Is that when you did the Derby? Yeah, at Fenway. Same, yep, same year, Derby, and then that's the college on, one that's too. That's on YouTube also. Um, but like led that league. Got offered by the Phillies out of there for like 
90 grand and said no. Cause I still was like, I don't think I'm gonna play baseball anymore. Like I'm going to finish my senior year, but I'm not going to, I'm tit. That's it. I almost felt like I'd be doing a disservice to myself if, you know, I took what they were, took it as like the summer guy they got picked well, up. Well, it's, I mean, I'm assuming as a kid that age, having the season you had, like we all have egos, let's be real. It's still 90 grand when you're telling, being told you're a second, third rounder. Right. It's almost a slap in the face. Right. Where I can go back. And now I got a lot to prove. Mm-hmm. Like fuck you, mm-hmm. keep your ninety. I'm going. I'm going back. So the hardest part about it is my senior year is when they rolled out the new bats. So we were like the the lab rat, you know, because they've changed them well, however many we, times yeah, since. Yeah, I don't think that was like one of the lowest scoring Dude, and seasons I, and I of hit, all time. I think I hit ten with them, and I I was either leading the team or or right behind somebody. But I'm like ten. I felt like okay, these things do not fly, and you know, to still hit 10, I felt like, okay, you know, there's something there. Um, but it was just a humbling summer. It was a, uh, it was a great summer to recharge across the country. Parents came out. Um, but just an experience to be around the best. I mean, you talk about the Cape Cod, it's like, Bates was like, you're going to play in the best college league in the country. So, you know, it's almost Quit like bitching and get strap it on, dude. Well, or yeah, it's gonna it's get like, worse. If yeah. you had any doubts because you didn't get draft, here's your chance to go, like squash those right. doubts. Wood bad against the best players, right? You know, and I, I, you know, I had a great summer. Coach Pickford, you know, he great, great coach who, um, you know, brought me in, and I think I hit fourth in that lineup behind Panic, and it was a great summer. It was it was great to recharge the batteries and you know um, think about the positives of of where I was at in life and trying to finish school and you know because it was almost one of those like baseball might not be yeah life right how you thought it was going to be life and um, really helped me I, I you know too in the sense that brought me back down off the whole cloud nine thing of you know being better than everybody or, or blowing people off. And it, it was good for me. I needed it. I needed it. Not how I would have picked to, <laughs> Hard you know, pill to swallow, but yeah, not how I would have picked to be humbled, but I needed it. And, and it was great. And it, it really propelled me into a true leadership role my senior year with younger guys and, you know, guys that go through adversity and, and how to overcome it. And, and it was a, it was a great, my senior year, um, was great for me that I was able to share a lot of that with the young guys and, Hey, you're going to battle adversity. You're going to battle, you're going to struggle. You're going to think you have it figured out and then you can get smacked in the mouth. And this is how, you know, you got to overcome it and, and get to where you want to be and stay on your feet. And, um, you know, it was an experience, but but something I needed that helped me even more so in baseball, but just life, kids, now and marriage, bad, right? and you know, it was you're you're forced to be a man real quick, real yeah. quick. So I mean, how is it going into that last year? You you find that you do get drafted twenty twenty first round. Yep, twenty. Um, like at that point, it's like I have another opportunity. Yeah. Has it changed your thought process? And that's not I'm a first rounder with the money. It's like, cool. I got another opportunity to keep playing this game. Yeah, I remember actually I was um, hitting in the barn at Fresno State when I got drafted. I, I just, uh, I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, Gary Wilson, a scout with the Rockies, who I love to this day. We're still friends. And, um, you know, he, he calls me and says, hey, man, we want to take you. Like, I wanted to take you. Um, you know, we, we just draft you in the 21st round. We want you to be a Rocky he came to my house and, you know, gave me a, so you sign and then, you know, senior sign is nothing. He's like, we're going to double it. So I was like, okay, what's that mean? He's like, well, like 2,800 bucks or, you know, <laughs> and half your plane ticket, or, <laughs> you know, something like that. But, um, so then I actually said, okay, uh, you know, give me a couple of days, which, most guys 
sign, where do I sign? But I really needed a couple of days to figure out like, do I want to keep riding this horse or do I want to, you know, close the book and, and, yeah. and, and, and write a new story and, um, figured let's give it a ride. You know, let's, let's, let's give it a shot. And I, uh, go to, uh, Tri County, Tri Cities, Pasco, Washington, and play my first short season there, and um, it was a blast. You know, you 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 know, kind of kind of going back to what to, uh, Chad said, you, your your uh, leash is a lot shorter um, when it comes to performance. If you're not a top pick or you know somebody that's drafted high, you really see the business side of it, um, which was very interesting to see how that all played out, but. Um, you know, all I knew is I had a Jersey on still and I got to go compete and I love competing and still to this day, you know, made some lifelong friends was came up with story, you know, uh, we played every level together, room together, and we're still really good friends to this day. And, um, was fortunate enough to play, I don't know, six, six seasons in the Rockies organization. Get up to AAA in Albuquerque. Yeah, I just knew it was the the window of opportunity was limited considering Todd Helton was playing first base and he wasn't going anywhere. So, and I couldn't learn another position at that point. I was old, you know, in the baseball world. Was that hard? You did didn't you play? Did you play an infield position for a game? Did you play shortstop? No, I, I jokingly put that on Twitter that I'm oh. uh, that I played shortstop <laughs> for the Rockies, um, only because it catches people's attention. Um, and I jokingly did it when I first started Twitter, when story was the rock was the shortstop, but I, I would always tell people that I was a shortstop and Trevor was my backup, but, um, was not the case. No, I played third base one game and I actually came into pitch one season for one inning against Modesto when we were losing by 17 runs. Um, and in fact, fortunately I got the guy out, uh, for the third out because Dusty Robinson was playing for Stockton at the time and he was left on deck or else I would have flipped some salmons and struck him out too. So, um, uh, good so stuff. How was it? I mean, obviously you got to end it when you felt like it was best for you to end it. How was that? Like when, what went into that decision? Um, my family really, you know, I had Cristiano, uh, my wife and I had Cristiano and, and she had a, uh, bad pregnancy with him. Uh, rare blood clot disease that just it was it was tough um so she was limited on what she could and couldn't do i would come home in the off season got a job at valley wide slinging kegs at i think my shift started at 3 50 in the morning i would work till 2 30 2 40 something like that i'd come home relieve her um till about five and then at 5 30 i would go do like four lessons straight and then after that i would try to get my training in so it was, it, you know, it just got to the point where you started putting life into perspective. And, you know, she, I couldn't have done it without her. I mean, she was the one that kept me in as long as I did. She's the one that kicked me on the backside and made me finish school. I had one, one class left to get my degree. And she was like, if you don't do this, like, I don't know. She said, we'll leave you, but something along those lines to get me to you enroll. don't mess with Portuguese women. No, no. no. No, you don't. Um, but it was just it, the the writing was on the wall. Um, you know, I felt a lot of those spring trainings. I was better than the guy that they had at first base in Double A and High A. He was also a seventh rounder. Um, so you're limited on what you can do. Um, and so it was just it was kind of there. the The writing was there, but. You know, kind of like I shared, my relationship with the front office was they um, they loved me. They they knew what I did in the clubhouse and the leadership and taking a high school kid like Trevor and, and kind of helping him navigate through, you know, the ups and downs and, and life. And um, they were like, dude, so I asked for my release. I, I said, if I'm not in the big leagues, when, when I finished in AAA, I said, if I'm not in the big leagues by the All-Star break, I'm going to ask for my release. And I wasn't. So I asked for my release and I remember them calling me in and being like, look, if you ever want to coach, like you have a job with us, like we'll find it, you know, whether I be a manager or a hitting coach, like 
we need guys like you to be a part of this organization. So um, I just knew what those bus trips were like as a player. And if I didn't get to swing a bat, I didn't want to go spend 13 hours on a bus. Well, because the just... things at home don't change. Right. right? You still have the mm-hmm. family. and mm-hmm. No, nah, it makes sense. And those guys don't get paid as much as people no. think they do in no. the minors. No. And it's a lot of work. You know, you're doing all your reports after the game with the coach. I mean, I remember guys, our coaching staff, would game would end, they'd be in there, you know, say game ended at 1030, shower out by 1115, they were still in uniform doing their reports probably till midnight each night. I mean, it's, it's a grind, you know, it's, it's a grind as a player and a coach. Um, so I didn't think I was ready for that, you know, from a coaching standpoint, but you kind of mentioned relationships. Um, that, and we also talked a little about coach Basil, but I was looking at some of the stuff from Fresno state, like the time you were there, your years there, I think there was like, either eight or nine big leaguers in the time that you were there, just your time. What does that say? Like when that's cause it's what bothers me when I hear people kind of say things negative towards the program or coach. And it's like, that's four years. That's pretty impressive. And even after that, there's been three right. or four. It's mm-hmm. not like it stopped, you know, and you've got Aaron judge, which I will get into separately, but like, just what does that say to you? Like to you about Bates, like, When you think about that, like, that's crazy. Nine big leaguers. I think of Fresno State, and Fresno State to me is um, a tough place to recruit only because there's no beach. There's no, you know, if you you take the, the surroundings out of it and you look at what the program has done. And, you know, if you if you took somebody that didn't know where Fresno was, but you say, hey, here's what the program has done the last eight years. I bet it would change drastically on how many more bigger recruits came into Fresno State. So the fact that he's able to get these recruits here from out of town, I mean, we got a lot of local talent here. Don't get me wrong. I mean, Buchanan, Clovis, Clovis West, Madera, they, they're all produced, Clovis North, they're all producing central central you know, stud, guys, stud yeah. athletes. I mean, there's talent here, um, which I have said for the longest time. Um but what he's able to do year in and year out with what he has and and develop these players into what they become, you, uh, there's no words for it. Like, well, what other programs doing it? Uh, that's the thing. You know, I, I, I like it's easy there, to go get the best and win. Yeah, there's right. some. It's not easy to get the what you call a mid major, which people don't like. People don't like. Like but you go I to a power to five. That's just the that's the truth. It's yeah. a mid major. We're D1. We could beat anybody at any time. Sometimes we just don't have the arms that the other one. Right. But, but position-wise, I've always said it's equal. You right. You could go play at Vanderbilt. You know right. what I mean? You know what 100%. I mean? It's just the pitching that kind of makes the difference, 100%. which is harder to recruit. It, 100%. <clears throat> and and honestly, that you know that was kind of the story of my, my career at Fresno State was when our hitters were hot, our pitchers weren't as hot at the time and when our pitching was hot our hitters weren't producing or else we i'm telling you we had the talent to be a nationally ranked team probably all four years i was there i'm not and i and i and when i I, when i say coach bates i know he would give a lot of credit obviously to his coaches that's just how he is you're not going to take all the credit for it or you and you know how you guys perform but i just think that's impressive you know when people want to shit on it you don't, well, don't see think, a lot of programs putting out that type of. Well, I also don't think people understand how much he loves the development part. It's not about bringing in talent and saying, go play. He brings them in and is like, we're going to work. Yeah. I'm going to get the best out of you now. Because just looking at Judge, there's no reason why Judge could, shouldn't have gone to a power well, he, five. His senior season, what, he hit like three bombs? Well, I'm talking about high school wise. Just looking at him, yes. like, oh, that guy could go anywhere, know, wherever he wants. Yes. But he came in and Bates all freaking developed him yeah. and worked him. And, you know, he turned guys into being good players into great players, I guess. And then not good players into good players. Yeah, he, he, Bates all, um, he, uh, or even like ready for Pro Bowl. Like they were ready. Right. And, and for I, that. Mm-hmm. W- Hang with me on this, but what Batesville does is he brings you in and will cleanse you of your selfish ways. As weird as that sounds, 
There's no more me. It's about me, which is why I think a lot of the projected big time players that would come in and leave, leave because they don't, they're used to everything being about me. Like, no, I'm, I'm, Batesel was not like that. It was, you are all here. You are all on this level and you will earn your right to get in, you know, be scratched into my lineup. And if you wanted to play, you better put in the work to play. But he, going back to, you know, the mental side of it, he just, he, he, he gets something out of you that you don't think you have internally to develop you as a player and just as a man in general. And I use that term man, but like he, he gets you to a point where you think you're going to snap, but then he gets you to the other side and then you look at him and he's just like, I told you like, this is what you're capable of doing. Right. Almost like if you, you thought you weren't capable. And then it's like, from that point, it's like, boom, you trust them, go. Yeah. And now you can play and, you know, <laughs> judge got a, he's got a good story. And if you get him on the podcast and you ask wow. him who got you to Fresno state, you're looking at him because he came in on a camp that I was working for Bates and Bates is like, Hey, we need to get this guy to Fresno state. <laughs> I'm like, who's this six, seven donkey? Like, <laughs> Is he going to take my spot? Yeah. What position is he playing in? <laughs> um, so Judge comes for a camp, and then the base is like, hey, you got him. Take him to the football game. Take him, you know. Next day, Judge is like, I'm going to Fresno State. So, like, to this day, I, my wife and I went to New York last year, and Jenny's like, hey, Jordan keeps bragging that, like, he got you to Fresno State. Is that true? I want to hear from you. And he's like, yeah, I, I, I came to Fresno State because your husband – convinced me that Fresno State was the place to be. So, like, that's my claim to fame with Judge. But, no, Judge Judge is a different animal. Um, but another guy, you know, in fact, Bates texted me. Let's see. Bates, Bates texted me the other day in Anaheim. He said, showing the MVP how to do it. But, th like, that's, that's Batesel. Like, he doesn't ask for the, you know, he never will ask for the fame. But if you listen to Judge talk in his interviews, and in his, it's never about Judge. Mm -hmm. And that's that's 100% credited to Batesel. It's never, it's never about you. It's about what your team did, who came in and delivered. And you make it about you, you're, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. And Judge, you see him to this day carry that out, and it's why he's the face of New York. It's why he's the MVP. It's why he's going to get the contract that he's going to get. It's how impressive is that? Not, not just what he's doing. How impressive is that to turn down a lot of money and bet on yourself knowing like one, this is where I want to He Everybody knows he wants to be in New York mm -hmm. and like, but what he's doing and then just to make that like, dude, it's imp beyond impressive. I've played a lot of video games, baseball video games. <laughs> and when they say video game numbers, like he's beating it's all the video game numbers. I, I love it. I can't you know? be more psyched. Like, and he doesn't pip homers. No, no dude. He doesn't showboat. Mm -hmm. he you does. don't hear about him. No. You don't see him talking. How often do you see him talking? It's like I always you see don't. him highlights. He's always showing that new smile off. But he doesn't I take. Even like, when he was breaking up the, the, uh, the Donaldson thing the other night, I, he's keeping him back. And, you know, I do miss the gap, though. <laughs> I really do. My wife does too. She, you know, it's just that was Judge that we knew with the gap, and you know. Anyways, but you're right. I mean, well, like he's, the, the spotlight isn't just like it's like it's not just the team thing, right? It's not on me, right? And it, it, it's not. And you think of that ballpark and the judges' chamber and right field. You ask for a more iconic guy to be the face of the Yankees, and that's it. Like, dude's never in the news for the wrong reasons. Nah. He's Derek Jeter 2.0. You have, you have, he's that next captain. Yeah. You have, um, what's his face from the uh, GM for the Red Sox? Um, oh, uh, uh, I don't know who it is now. Anyways, he's on episode interviews. Epstein? Praising oh, Judge. Theo Epstein? Epstein? Yeah, but yeah. like you, you have people that are not supposed to like the Yankees. The Yankees saying you can't what help a, but like this person. Yeah. Like you, this is how every baseball player, you know, should act. Right. Like this is your ideal 
role model. Like player. that's a question I'd love to ask you. You know, like, for so long you would say it was a guy like Buster Posey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Guy yeah. does no wrong. Right. Always doing the right thing. Yeah. He's charities and and it's never about him. And now you got a guy like Judge that's in a city like New York. And it's like And where it's very easy to steal the spotlight with the season you're having. Oh my gosh. It's not. Because it's they're not. trying to win a World Series. And, you know. It's, and it's not even like even trying to get paid. Like, that'll happen how and when it happens. They played the doubleheader against the Twins yesterday. His interview was about the young kid that came up and and hit the ball up the middle and Correa, Correa to win it. And Correa made the diving stop and threw him out at first. And all his interview talked about was, hey, I pulled that guy aside and I said, look, it's at bats like that that are going to help this team win ball games, Like, the question wasn't even directed towards that, but like that's the environment he creates for these young guys. And to do that on the level he's doing it at is where it's so easy to make it about yourself. Oh, this whole season is about him, except to him, which is you can't write a different script. I mean, it's it should all be about him. Every question Why'd you turn this down? What are you looking for now? And it's deflected with, did you see how well Garrett Cole did tonight? Like, we weren't talking about that, but like, when Judge says that, now you are talking about that. Like, it's just impressive. It's impressive. I would like to ask him, how much does he get heckled? Because I could imagine it's, I think it happens. I would think, I'm sure it happens because there's idiots out there. I mean, I think I bet for the most part, Boston. Right. Maybe well, in I'm the AL like, East because it's the AL East. Well, and they, they see him but, I mean, a lot. he goes to... But you come out Oakland, to Anaheim... I mean, they're not booing him. But they're also paying... S- to see him. To see him. Yes. Right. Why are we going to heckle... So, we go to Oakland. And we took the family to Oakland a couple weekends ago to see Judge. And I, I'd never seen more people in that stadium than <laughs> All year? the Sunday game at 105. And I was like, you would have thought it was a World Series here. And we were in... It was, it was great because we were in the... Yankees kind of section and, and in fact his mom and dad were there um it was good to chat with them but the whole pl- it was like a battle between like let's go Yankees let's go Angel or excuse me A's. let's go A's um and he and the game we went to I think he went over four with two strikeouts but then one of the strikeouts like half the crowd was cheering and my my oldest Christian was like why are they cheering that he struck out and I said well when you're that good like people want you to fail. And it was kind of a good teaching moment for my right. son, but that was the first time that I actually heard a crowd boo for him or excuse me, cheer for him when he was struggling. Yeah. Cheered again, going again. But him. it was funny because as soon as that happened, it got louder with the cheers, the MVP cheers. And so it was, it's incredible. It's, it really is. It's incredible. I, uh, you know, I, I saw some stuff online about him this year and, it was Yankee fans. Like, like if he gets, if he passes Maris uh, for the Yankees, is it the true record? Like, do you, at that point, do you count the Bonds number and the McGuire and Sosa? And it was an interesting question because it's like, you know, we've been kind of in support of Bonds as, as nobody's ever proved it. It's been said. It's been speculated. They say they've proved it, but they've never had, like, hard proof it right. says this guy tested positive. Mm-hmm. The other two, you can argue that, I think. I don't know. What do you think? I, I what mean, do I think? Yeah. I think it's 73. And that's no disrespect to anybody, but as a baseball person that played baseball and was even in that, the end of the era when steroids was kind of getting out, I was, I was in the end of it. You know, there's guys doing other kind of drugs that, you know. Sure. I mean, We've seen it playing and being around. <laughs> Still. So, I mean, I just, 73, 73. Whether you're on steroids or not, to hit a ball as hard as it is. Yeah. You know. And the guys that, that hate it, there's some baseball players that do hate it and, and think that, you know, you you did that to the game. You cheated. You should be out. And then there's some guys like like me. I loved watching it. And Dude. I, it's, game, it's baseball. Who didn't stop what they were doing to watch Gagne and Every, Bonds? Everybody. Right? 103 yeah. against Bonds. Yeah. Mono Let's mono. Like, dude, I mean, I do I think it would be great for Judge in the sense that there's no asterisk? 
hundred percent. Yeah. Well, when's the, and we're talking about it because when's the last time anybody right even got to this number? Right. I mean, you look mm-hmm. at the number and everyone says, okay, asterisk, 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 and then you got judge that's clean, mm-hmm. which that alone speaks volume. Um, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm similar to what Chad's saying is that's the baseball I grew. I, you, you didn't grow up watching dudes bunt. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like you watch you you turn on the TV to watch gas and dudes hit bombs, and it saved baseball back then. Yeah, I mean, I you know I I think back to stories. Even my grandpa told me when he was in the big leagues with the Reds is there were two coffee pots. There's your one coffee pot on the right that was filled with the greenies, and there was the other coffee pot on the left. There's a post game and a pre game coffee pot. You know, and I just. You know, now it's more fine-tuned and, and uh, you know, obviously the steroid era and what they're doing with that. But do I think, you know, do I think Bond's numbers are illegitimate because of what's the allegation against him? Absolutely not. Have we supplemented the steroid era with a baseball? Um, like we, we call the steroid era, like, but the baseball's obviously different. Is it replaced? Well, I, like, like I said earlier, can you, can you argue that point? I guess I, when I was at the game the other weekend, one, there was one batter for the A's that was hitting above two sixty, and the whole time, uh, the whole team, the whole team, and there was probably six batters that were sub two twenty. So, yeah, you know. It, that's not baseball I would want to go see. Yeah. Not knocking them. They're in the big leagues and, you know, but I, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's a different era for sure. Um, you know, I, I just, I miss the days of, you know, Bonds and Gagne. <laughs> baseball. Yeah. I just, I, I don't know. Well, because Bonds also hit for average. I mean, he was a 300 hitter. Yeah. Yeah, and then you think of them eliminating pitchers hitting, you know, which, okay, half will say it's good for the game, half will say it's not. It's an extra. We, we both wish it happened oh earlier. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that, that could have been <laughs> we the ticket. We were both the National League teams. That could have been the ticket, you know. Instead, you know, I, I just think the game is is changing for sure. Um, you know, and I think what Judge is doing silences what's happening it in takes the game. it takes some of the focus off mm-hmm. of because mm-hmm. i think a lot of people that are true fans <clears throat> think negatively of some of the rule changes the extra inning stuff the the pitchers having to throw to three batters and pitchers getting checked after every right, inning. every inning you know you're going to see the pitch clock coming in um i think you're right i think it does take the focus off mm-hmm. some of that because it's it's what we use, what we saw. It's like that was the focus. Everything was like McGuire watch, Sosa watch. Right. What they do today. Mm-hmm. You know, and if you're at school, first thing you at home was go turn on ESPN Dude. and see what those guys had accomplished. What did they do today? Did they get there? I saw Detweiler tweet that they want ESPN to start, you know, stopping what they're doing and zoning in on judges at bats. Mm-hmm. I saw that. I did see that. Yeah. Um, which I think he's got a valid point. I mean, I remember doing when when that was happening with Sosa and McGuire. Yeah. Like the world stopped. Even with Maris. Yes. Yeah. Even with Maris. Um They should. It's a big deal. To huge. get to sixty one and to be clean and in this when baseball is and I'm gonna say this because this is what I believe, when baseball is so bad right now, like from top to bottom all the way to Little League, all the way up. I just think baseball's in a bad state right now. There's a lot of bad in baseball. There's a lot of bad in baseball. Right. We can go that way. That this is so big right it now. It is. For everybody to that like us. Like, this is so big for us because this is bringing us back to, like, yes, this is baseball. It needs to be watched. It, they need to have judge watches all over the place. They, it needs to go on the Jumbotron yeah. in every mm-hmm. ballpark, yeah. you know, when he's up to bat. Sure. It's, it's, it's just huge. It's historic. It's, it is historic. It is. I mean, You're between right. There's only, him, what, four players yeah. that hit over 60? Yeah, and this was great is you've got that, right? And then you've got, like, pool holes, but five away. Oh, my exactly. God. Exactly. He should Ver, be on watch. It sucks Verlander's been on, is on the IL, but for him to 
at 39 to be pushing for 20 wins yeah. and a possible Cy Young. Yeah, I like there's some really there's great some stories. Baseball. The Orioles are two, three and a yeah, half, four I, out of the wild card. That's the hardest part is I don't think it's getting the exposure that it we're it, we're exposing the wrong we're promoting correct. the wrong shit and, that, and that's the media mm-hmm. they're doing the wrong stuff we need to be concentrating on the good yeah yeah I completely agree I I because there's a lot agree. of it this year you know f- half of the media attention was about Tatis yes and when he's coming back and then him testing positive and it just we're, we're I feel we're focused in the wrong areas you know and I remember like you guys, when when you have a historic, you know, incident or season for certain individuals, like, it's got to be, I just remember it being broadcasted. Mm-hmm. You turn on the radio, 104.1 would stop what they're doing, you know, just. You <laughs> In know. the randomest of places. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and, and it'd be on at the minor league ballparks. It would be on everywhere. Like, this is what's going on. Like, we're witnessing potential history, history like. You know, the game hasn't changed in however many hundreds of years, and, and we're a part of it right now. All of us, we get to watch it and experience it, and I agree. I don't, I don't think it's getting the, the proper media attention that it should, and I don't think it's getting broadcasted to, to people enough in the way that they are a part of history and witnessing history. And regardless of your if you don't, you didn't have to be a, a, a Bonds fan or even a baseball fan to want to appreciate witness that. what or a giant happened. Right. Yeah. You could be, you could care less about baseball, but you knew what was going on. Like, okay, this is a big deal. You're seeing something nobody's ever done. Yeah. Right. You know, and I, I don't think there's enough of that right now with what we're getting to experience. And um, I wish it was different. I mean, I tune in whatever I'm doing, the, the Yanks are playing. Uh, I throw judge on at the office. I throw him on at home. My wife's getting sick of, of, of me turning on baseball on every TV in the room, but it beats having bubble guppies and everything else on in every, yeah, every room with the kids. So, And now listen, obviously we're biased, okay? It, but it just so happens that he's a dog, right? Right, And he's doing what he's doing. Of course we want it. But I think we would be tuned in. If like there was you anybody. Said, it, it bonds, right? You didn't have yeah. to be a fan of the Giants. You didn't have to like bonds <clears> at all. But even like a Dodger fan has to appreciate. Oh, you you, you were watching. To. You were watching it. Yes. So, and mm-hmm. I, yeah, I think that's where we're at with it. You have to. You, you just that's that's the history. That's baseball, and you get to be a part of it. And it's then now just the Yankees, right? It's a Yankee record. I think it'd be American League record as well. You know, I told Chad on here, like, if assuming he stays with the Yankees, like, you're gonna see 99 in Monument Park. It's, and you're watching. That's mm-hmm. what I, you know, we talked about Jeter, like Miguel Cabrera. There, these people need to appreciate with the pool holes. Like, this is history, right? These are even our, Yachty. This is just the, watching oh Yachty catch. You know, like, but you, we, like, we talk about Willie Mays and Clemente and, and guys in a certain light. Mm-hmm. These are those guys yeah. in 50 years. Even what Shohei is doing, as much as I hate talking about the MVP and. Yeah, what he's doing is unbelievable. I hate when they're like, "Oh, a new record." Yeah, every time he steps on the field, it's a new record. No pitcher's ever done what he's done. So, like, I hate when they do that. Oh, new record. Well, yeah, I know, but like, and that's why I hate that he, because the writers are stupid, or might go over Judge if Judge doesn't get this record. That's another reason why I feel like it's important, and because he needs to get that. Because you can't not give that. Well, to the him. AL West sucks. Yes. Okay. He's 100%. doing it. He's doing it in. Arguably the best division in baseball. Judges, yes. yes. And we had this argument last year with Vlad yeah. and and Otani. No disrespect to Otani. It's insane. And I've completely Maybe flipped, we need an way. Otani award at the end of the year. Just give him his own fucking award. I, and I, look, I agree. I, what, what, Otani is a specimen. It's crazy. Yes. Like, the, a freak. To do that, like, I, I get it. I get it. And, and, and people know who you are and, and what you're doing is incredible. But like, you're thirty I, games out. Your season's been over I, yeah, for a month and a half. I mean, like, does winning have like to? Your your bats aren't pressured like how, judges at bats. Right. I just argue that how valuable are you to your team when you don't win? Well, like no, is, win, well, it, is it value? They're like monet- three games over five hundred when he hits a home run, and like if he doesn't hit a home run or pitch, I think it, he they're like twenty games. Yeah, over it's it's a pretty. So bad I mean, they're stat. only three games over five hundred when he hits a home run or pitches. 
So I mean, and I'm not, and he's great. He's a great I mean, player. He, he does he's gonna bring. Be, he's going to be a, a one one. You know what I mean? You can't right. argue that. Yeah. But I when I, I think of most valuable players, like well, what is that also as what is he valuable to the team? Yeah. Right. Is the team and then, listen, Judge is surrounded by some great players. Obviously, you mentioned he's going to always hand the credit to those guys, and they are. Angels have some pretty good players too. They haven't been able to stay on the field all season. You know, another dog in, in Taylor who had a freaking. Mm-hmm. Started off hot. Insane first half. Yeah, you know, I, I just think of Judge and what he was doing while they were, what, 50 games above everyone else? Yeah. And then his the pedal's still yeah, to you, the floor with him. It's like, like this mm-hmm. has got to stop at some I mean, point. now all the things are Judge carrying the team on his back, the whole, you know, the last hour. Many he had to go see the chiropractor. Right, but he's <laughs> That like, meme he's, was pretty he's, funny. He's still doing it. Yeah. yeah. Like, because the dude wants to win. Yeah. Like, he, you know, we talked about earlier, like, that was Jeter's mindset. Like, if you don't win, you lose. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's like the Yankee way. Dude, you're this exactly. And it's why he's the perfect fit. And what that organization is, is used to and needs is someone that will not settle for anything less than winning because he doesn't care about the, I mean, obviously, how you would, he, Deep down, you know, that record would obviously he would care about. But dude wants to win. Yeah. Dude dude is there. He, It's almost, you know, one of those guys like a Jeter where you don't really have anything to prove anymore because what, what you've already shown and what you've done, now now you just want the rings. You want the championships. Yeah. You want the legacy. The it's what we play for. Dude, that's it. That's it. And that, that's why he's the perfect candidate for the New York Yankees is because that's like, that's their mindset and you know winning we're better than everybody will win and he wants to do that and he's and having him do it in the manner that he does where it's self deflect all credit elsewhere yeah get the checkbook out already <laughs> <laughs> like, it's gonna be a what gnarly, are we waiting on it's gonna be a gnarly dumb my goodness but he also may not want that distraction right now either Oh, 100%. You know what he I mean? said Let's, it before the we'll season. Just, we'll, we'll, get it, we'll meet if up it, again when it's if done. If it doesn't get handled before the season, we'll talk about don't it. Don't talk about it during the season because I want to win. Yeah. I don't want any focus away from the team. And I would imagine it's it's they've respected that and are probably not happy that something didn't get settled before the, the season now that he is where he is. But, you but know. also for the Yankees, like, listen, let's be real. It's a win-win. Yeah. What we get to lock up, probably one of the best players in the game for a long time, a franchise guy, and, oh, look, we're going to win games too, and probably a World Series. I saw some stupid stat that was um, about his jersey sales. His jersey sale alone makes the Yankees, I want to say it was somewhere between 2 and a half to $4 million a season. Just his his jersey. It's like football numbers, like football. Like that's like top tier football. Players. Dude, you got guys everywhere in the country buying Judge jerseys now. Like, yeah, Yankees are one of those teams where you have a there's fans <laughs> everywhere. Dude, I mean the the stadium in Oakland, a third of it had Judge something on. Like, it was incredible to be on this side. Obviously, him being near hometown, but you start seeing what he means to the game and, and the fan appreciation, like he is doing something special. I think it's also maybe even more impressive that he's not changed. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Cause that's easy. Especially like New, York, New York, right. You like, get caught up in, in all of it. And it's like, no, nah, I'm staying. Like, I know it's like, he's been there before. Right. It's pretty crazy. And it's how, impressive. how you, you know, having that spotlight maybe at Fresno state and being able to get through it and stay, you know, stay on, on track, but to do it in New York, like I can imagine daily temptations or daily invites and, you know, superstars or even people trying to get you to mess up. Like the bait that you have to not take the temptation is real, man. It's incredible. Super impressive. Um, well, I hope he gets it. I'm pulling for him. I think yeah. everybody. I think everybody kind of wants to see it. Um, as far as the Yankees win the World Series, I could, you know, while I do support Judge, I am a Braves fan, <sighs> so I don't mind seeing like Dylan Lee get another ring. Um, 
But what are, what's your thoughts on uh, Olson and the whole the deal the trade? Just in general, I, I played against him. In fact, he was teammates with Dusty and Stockton. So I mean, I think he's he's a legit player. I I think everybody maybe expected a little bit more this year, uh, but. Can imagine the shoes to fill. Well, sure, can I mean, only I mean, imagine you're replacing a, th- a perennial well, 300 hitter. Well, the face of the organization. Yes, he's I mean, the next Chipper Jones. But I mean, it's also the leader in the clubhouse. Like yeah. that's, you know, I like Olson a lot, I, and honestly, I get the move too. It just sucks because it's Freddie Freeman. Yeah. Like it was hard to swallow, uh, but that's a really good baseball team, and, and I think they have like six or. What did we say? Six or seven of those guys under control for yeah. like the next six years. Albies, the Braves yeah. are not going anywhere. Yeah. Did any of that come to light about how it all went down? I remember there being With some tweets agent. about. No. That, as far as I've seen, no. Nothing's been actually factual. So, so they, they made that big story about it. Like, oh. Apparently they, was, there was a lot of inaccuracies into that story. Yeah. But I, I don't think anything. Well, he did. He did. He did fire Terminate agent. the agent. Yes. And I was I, I was hesitant until I saw like a Buster only. I've been waiting for that. Yeah. And I haven't seen anything right. confirming. And it's like, yeah, you just be careful with that stuff. But and very I think weird. Freddie might be the guy where he's like, let it go. Yeah. Like. What's done is the done. deal's done. I'm yeah, here. I'm we, here. I'm we're producing. trying to win. But, but the emotion that he showed, oh, like, man. you can just tell that it could be true. So I, I think something. I mean, you don't just fire your agent that you've had for your. Well, and for nothing to be answered, it leaves that assumption right. on the it's, table. It's just exactly. one of those where, like, it where might perception. not all be accurate, yeah. but something might have happened along the lines where maybe one right. line of communication wasn't relayed for whatever reasons. Well, it happened to you. Yeah. You know, it's not like it's not capable of happening. Or else, and when you leave it on a I would have been playing instead of Freddie Freeman. You know? Probably, yeah. <laughs> we, we could probably get you an A's uni right now. Oh, man. Uh, dude, I this has been freaking great. Uh, I am so glad you could come and did this with us. I also I apologize. Sorry, sorry it's taken so long. It took two years to do it. Um, we could probably keep going. We're going to have to do it again. Yes. Soon. And not, not two years away no. this time. Maybe you could bring your friend Judge with, with, with you next. Yeah, too. or maybe we uh, we have a follow up once he breaks the record. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally down for sure. that. Totally in. And we got to get the 08 dogs wrapped. We got to do that again, dude. They would love. They. I remember we got off that, and they were like, "We got." It was fun. Got, like, like Obi's, Sus, Sus Obi's the best. Dude, Sus, that was would. such so much fun. Yeah, Sus. And the, I think the people love to hear you guys. You know some of the the stuff that the inside jokes that you know. I mean, there's just a lot of good stuff that. We always can't get to. I think we need to do that again. Yeah. And so. what are we, however many years removed, we're allowed to. <laughs> and then some... when Bates all retires, we need to get him in here oh. where all the real stuff. Yeah, where it doesn't said. matter yeah. anymore. Everybody <laughs> can just let a fire. You might have a two, three hour. That's fine. We'll do a three part. That that's that's fine. We'll, we'll just take we the day off. We might need to be sitting like, <laughs> we all need to be spread we'll, out yeah. for that. We'll have, to, we'll have to rent a camera crew for that day. There might be some, yeah. Yeah. But anyways, Split it up. Yeah, no, but again, man, it's it's this was a lot of fun. I appreciate you doing yeah, this. Yeah, thank you for having um, me. This was awesome. That uh that is another episode of the Hit or Die podcast. Hit or die. <laughs>